Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about Venus and a new idea coming out of Goddard Institute for Space Sciences that suggests that it seems that Venus probably had water and habitable conditions for a very long time and it also seems that these conditions only disappeared a few hundred million years ago. In other words, it's possible that Venus was habitable for billions of years. Let's talk about this and welcome to What Math. So for a very long time, most scientists have been kind of speculating that it wasn't just Earth that became habitable, but that it was also Mars and, uh, of course, Venus. All three planets very likely were somewhat similar to each other, and in some sense may have even had very similar initial conditions for, well, essentially life. We know, for example, that Mars definitely had an ocean, and we even see very obvious signs of shoreline um, on the surface of, of Mars, including even signs of a mega tsunami that happened here. But at the same time, back in the late 70s, when the Soviets and the Russians launched their mission to Venus, specifically the Pioneer missions and also the Venera missions, this right here is one of the Pioneer probes, they um, realized that the surface of Venus, and more specifically the middle part of the atmosphere, um, had quite a lot of water vapor. And at the same time, they also realized that Venus, despite being such a different planet today, was very likely very Earth-like at some point in history. And there are quite a lot of studies out there that do analyze the water vapor presence on Venus in a lot more detail, and also talk about Venus being a lot more Earth-like in the past, and most likely having a global ocean as well. But this particular idea that was recently presented in the Goddard Institute for Space Science investigates how long this ocean may have lasted and also tries to identify when this ocean disappeared. Now, there is no actual paper out yet, it's only based on the presentation and the paper will come out eventually, but here the scientists used several simulations, specifically five very specific unique simulations, to try to identify how long the ocean on the surface of Venus would last, and most importantly discover when it may have disappeared. And to their surprise, and let's actually maybe try to create an ocean here as well by modifying certain parameters of this Venus, they discovered that it's possible that ocean here only disappeared about 700 million years ago. And more specifically, approximately 715 million years ago, when something major occurred, something so dramatic and so catastrophic that it eventually released all of the carbon dioxide that was hiding inside of the planet, and um, following the so-called runaway greenhouse effect, the entire atmosphere became extremely saturated in CO2, very, very hot, and we got the planet we have today, which is the object you see right here, an extremely hot, very highly pressurized planet that um, doesn't really have any capability of supporting organic life. The temperatures here are 450 to 500 degrees Celsius, and the pressures are around 90 to 94 atmospheres. In other words, about 90 to 94 times more than on the surface of our planet. And these conditions were very likely created by this so-called runaway greenhouse gas effect. Now, what exactly happened here, we don't really know, but we do have some ideas. So, um, the way that it works, at least right now, for Earth, on our beautiful planet, the uh, CO2 and a lot of other greenhouse gases are more or less um, controlled. In other words, they're reduced by something. And here on Earth, a lot of the CO2 gas, and actually most of the CO2 gas, is actually not in the atmosphere. It's inside ground. It's um, basically deposited inside the rock and um, has been there for a very long time. The vast majority of CO2 is literally underneath us. And the thing is, there is a way for it to be released, usually through volcanic eruptions. And you can actually check out some of the older videos, specifically the one that might be above my head right now, that does talk about the amount of CO2 inside Earth. But just to give you a summary, if you were to release all of it into the atmosphere, the pressures here would be pretty much even higher than on Venus, and the temperatures would be dramatically higher as well, close to about 1000 degrees Celsius. And so all of the CO2 is stored there, and only major volcanic eruptions such as, for example, 
the eruptions of the Siberian traps um, that occurred in Siberia around 250 million years ago and here the word trap simply means steps which refer to the very unusual formation that you can see in this picture right here from India or in this picture here all of these were formed by volcanic traps now Siberian traps that were tremendously large and located in this area right here although let me show you on the map instead so this right here these traps, these volcanoes were so large and so powerful that um, they caused an actual extinction, one of the biggest extinctions ever. And today we believe that all major extinctions can be correlated um, or associated with some kind of a major volcanic eruption. And even the one that um, affected dinosaurs 65 million years ago happened around the time of a very major eruption in India known as the Deccan Traps. The location for which is right here in purple. So this extremely large eruption happened around the same time as the passing of dinosaurs, which um, means that many scientists for the longest time argued that it's probably the volcanoes that killed them, not the actual asteroid. But today we believe that it's very likely that it did start with the asteroid, but the volcanic eruption in India basically finished the job. So the volcanic eruptions of this proportion are usually enough to start releasing a tremendous amount of gases into the atmosphere and more specifically the CO2 gas. And if such volcanic eruption releases a very large amount of CO2, it can suddenly and quite dramatically change the entire face of a planet. And so the scientists behind this presentation and behind the study believe that something like this must have happened on Venus. Now, we don't really know what caused it. We don't really know exactly how all of it started, but it's possible that roughly around 715 million years ago, something occurred on Venus, and here we can only speculate what it was, but there is a suggestion that maybe it was actually a crash. This isn't really coming from this particular study, but it has been investigated by other scientists. And this crash, uh, which may have occurred around 750 million years ago, then initiated a kind of a chain reaction. Following the collision with whatever it was, or possibly some other catastrophic event, pretty much all of the volcanoes, or all major volcanoes on Venus, kind of activated. They started releasing a large amount of um, atmospheric gases, and um, we believe that this may have led to the end of Venus as a habitable planet. Now, it doesn't have to be a crash to cause this. It could actually be just the volcanoes themselves that suddenly triggered all at the same time. But we don't really know what can cause such a tremendously powerful eruption to literally annihilate the entire planet. I guess the biggest worry here is that it could happen on Earth one day. Now, um, there are several papers investigating the uh, correlation between major volcanic eruptions and potential crashes. So, um, like I mentioned, the Indian Deccan Trap volcanoes did occur around the same time as the um, catastrophic asteroid that started the demise of dinosaurs. And so, there are papers suggesting that by experiencing this collision, Earth's volcanoes on the opposite side of the planet literally triggered and started releasing a large amount of gas that then added a lot of um, various materials to the atmosphere that then changed climate and caused the dinosaurs to completely die out. And so we're not sure if this is what happened on Venus, but what we're certain about is that it definitely changed dramatically. This change, um, if it did occur about 750 million years ago, was quite sudden and quite, I guess, in some sense, unexpected. But what's more interesting here is that prior to this change, Venus was very likely a very Earth-like planet. The average temperature here would not be really as low as Earth, but it would be a relatively comfortable maybe 20 to possibly 50 degrees Celsius. And so it's quite possible that prior to this unusual catastrophe, Venus's temperature was in the range of about 20 to 50 degrees Celsius, and the conditions could have been very similar to Earth, although a little bit hotter because Venus is closer to the Sun. And in the simulations that they ran for this study, they've even tried to simulate a planet where it was literally covered in water, um, approximately 158 meters on average in depth, and uh, the simulation where there was very little water. And all of them had very similar results, with the sudden changes in conditions around 700 million years ago. 
And in all of those situations, you get pretty much the same result. Eventually, the water disappears, and Venus then sort of turns into this very inhospitable planet that it is today, with extremely hot temperatures and pressures. And although the scientists behind this study didn't really go into the details of how they think it happened, they do speculate that it probably has something to do with magma on the inside, not so much as the actual asteroid collision. So in other words, it's basically anyone's guess what happened. Until we actually go to Venus and try to investigate some of the details by landing here and by somehow trying to survive long enough to study the actual rock, we're not going to be able to answer these questions. But why is this important? Well, it's important for one reason. If sometime, a long time ago, Venus looked like this and now it sort of looks like this and is basically no longer capable of sustaining life, what went wrong? How do we avoid this from having this here on Earth? Because Venus is so similar to Earth in many different ways, just a little bit smaller, we definitely want to avoid this. And trying to understand what happened here, and to prevent this sudden release of CO2, and to keep planet like this, is very important for the survival of life on our planet. And so this study is actually very important. If this was an asteroid impact, we have to try to understand how to prevent large asteroids from hitting our planet in the future. If this was some kind of um, solidification of magma on the inside that we don't really even know how to prevent right now, we then need to find other ways of managing this if it actually happens in the future. And since of all the terrestrial planets in our solar system, really just one is capable of um, hosting human life, we need to make sure that we maintain it this way and we uh, need to understand other planets and what actually went wrong here to try to prevent this from happening to our planet. And at the same time, this study may also help us understand if life did exist on Venus and possibly maybe it even somehow transferred to Earth afterwards. So all of these questions will one day be answered, but for now we just need to send more probes and study a little bit more of both Venus and Mars to try to understand what actually happened to both of these planets. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Once the paper comes out, I'll put it in the description below, but for now that's it. Check out some of the other videos about Venus on this channel and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does actually help me quite a lot. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.